You are the stars, and the world is watching you. By your presence, you send a message to every village, every city, every nation. A message of hope, a message of victory. The right, the right to play on any playing field, you have earned it. The right to study in any school, you have earned it. The right to hold a job, you have earned it. The right to be anyone's neighbor, you have earned it. Good morning, I'm Officer Edwards of the Lubbock Police Department. Uh, I have the honor to, to pray this invocation for the Special Olympics. We just wanna bow our heads and pray. Lord, Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity for this, these athletes and, and for the Special Olympics. We thank you for everyone who's involved, all the supporters, all the fans, the families, all, all the people that are involved in any way, God. We pray, Lord, that you would protect our athletes, God. Give them protection and, and skill and help them, Lord God. God, I pray that you would move over this whole whole operation, that you would bless them. And thank you for all that you're doing, in Jesus' name. This is Cesar Hernandez, Vocational Transistor Center, Busy Bees. We would like to welcome you to today's virtual breakfast of champions. We hope you enjoyed the show. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today for our virtual Breakfast of Champions. I'm Curry Wilson, and it is my pleasure to be your host this morning. I have been a volunteer with the Special Olympics for about two years, and I'm also a founding member of Special Olympics College um, at Texas Tech University, so thank you for joining me today. So now, for today's show, we would like to thank everyone who participated in our opening ceremonies. Summer, Jayanna, and Kami, athletes from our UCS campus, McKenzie Middle School, for singing the national anthem, the Lubbock County Sheriff's Office Honor Guard for the flag presentation, along with Officer Michael Edwards with the Lubbock Police Department for the beautiful invocation, and Officer Chris Grams with Lubbock ISD Police for carrying the flame of hope alongside Jayden and Eliza. And now what about that wonderful welcome from Cesar Hernandez of Lubbock ISD VTC. We invite all of you here to open your hearts and minds and commit to working together to create a world where everyone is included. We are honored to have so many taking the time this morning to watch this event who truly believe in this amazing revolution and are willing to act on it. 
It is my pleasure to introduce Tim Martin, CEO of Special Olympics Texas, to acknowledge a few special individuals, followed by one of our biggest advocates, Lubbock County Sheriff Kelly Rowe, whose department partners with us year-round through the Law Enforcement Torch Run. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tim Martin, CEO and President of Special Olympics Texas, and I want to welcome you to Breakfast with Champions. Thank you so much for being here. You know, these great events don't happen at Special Olympics without sponsors. So I want to take a moment to recognize our Breakfast with Champion sponsors for today. I also want to recognize our great sponsors statewide that are there with us through thick and thin. Thank you for your continued support. All the hard work that goes in logistically to the Breakfast with Champions is thanks to our Breakfast with Champions committee. So I want to take a chance to recognize them as well. We also have another group that works year round to make sure the resources are there for our athletes and volunteers in the community. So our local resource board, we really want to make sure that they have a chance to be recognized as well today. You know, these times have been very unique for us at Special Olympics Texas. But in a lot of ways, if you look at it, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. The isolation we felt being at home the lack of access to family members and friends, the inability to just freely go and do what we want. That is missing. But you know what? If you really look at it, in so many cases, you're, you're living the lives of so many of the athletes at Special Olympics Texas. It's an opportunity for you to understand and empathize with them and to make sure you understand that this is a powerful moment when you don't have the chance to share your greatnesses the talents that you can't, can utilize to change society, a voice to be heard. These are great opportunities for you to realize it's a chance for us to move forward. With that at Special Olympics, we've worked really hard in these tough times to get to those points. Over the last two years, we've really struggled to change this organization and put it in a new direction of inclusion, health, and life-changing experiences for our athletes. And as we drive forward with that mission, we want to make sure that you're all aboard to be a part of that. So let me talk to you a little bit about the story. A lot of you heard this my first year here. Met an athlete in high school by getting in trouble and sentenced to Special Olympics. I certainly felt like I was too good to be there. I was better than all of those athletes. I was better than any individual in that room. And then I realized I wasn't even close. Those individuals made sure I felt cherished. They made sure that they honored me every time I walked in with a smile. They made sure I never went unrecognized. They, were, they had the power to change the human spirit. And that's what Diana, who was the individual I was paired up with, did for me. Long before there was a label called Unified Sports. But I will tell you folks, we have over 50,000 amazing individuals that can change your life if you open your life to them and allow them to come through those doors. Then we also had some difficult moments where we had a parent tell me one time as we had a dance team performing on stage at an opening ceremonies, as she pointed at our athletes and said, those people should not have to see things like this. Those people, what is those people? Those people is an easy barrier to put ourselves between someone else, to either label them different, label them less, label them not as important. That won't happen at Special Olympics Texas. So we came up with a motto at that point. We're all one of those people. Get over it, play unified. Unified is a way for us to change the world through inclusion. What is unified? It is the backbone of Special Olympics. It is an opportunity for those with and without intellectual disabilities, or as we prefer to call them, different abilities at Special Olympics, to drive forward, build those relationships, build those social opportunities, life-changing opportunities like employment, but also health and sport and drama and art, a way to make sure that we have a stage to reveal the greatness that lies in every human being. Unified is an amazing program. We have some great partners and amazing growth to talk about in that area as well. The UIL, the world's largest interscholastic program, has officially said we want to be involved with Special Olympics. And vice versa, we said of course we do as well.
and we anticipate 200% growth over the next four years. That's 100,000 more athletes coming into our movement. A chance for us to be there and support so many new lives. But also, when you just think about athletes coming into our movement, that's 100,000 partners as well. More volunteers, more families. Special Olympics, we truly are unified. Also, health. Did you realize Special Olympics is the world's largest provider of, of health services to individuals with intellectual disabilities? But it's not just screenings anymore, folks. In the last two years, we've grown to do preventative health, healthy lifestyles, follow-up exams, and follow-up care, and no charge to our athletes through our great networks. We continue to push that forward, and we need your support as we do that. But most importantly, we want everybody to realize you can be involved at Special Olympics, you can be unified, and we need you to be involved. But more than involvement, folks, during these times, this has been the leanest time in Special Olympics history, not in just in Special Olympics Texas, but throughout the world. We have incredible work being done. We've completely revamped our programming to both be in person and virtual, but we need your support today. Please give to Special Olympics Texas, and in return, we guarantee to you, we will deliver amazing programs to our athletes, volunteers, families, and all of those that choose to be a part of this great inclusive movement at Special Olympics Texas. Good morning. I'm Kelly Rowe, Sheriff here in Lubbock County. I'd like to first off thank the South Plains Area Special Olympics for giving me an, a brief opportunity here to uh, talk about the importance of Special Olympics and how and what I've seen over the years with regard to it. You know, our country now is in, a, is in an interesting time and there's lots of things going on, uh, lots of division. And so one thing that I take particular note of is, is that we don't talk about some of the things that I kind of consider the fabric or the glue of a, of a great community, which is when we talk about civic virtue. And, you know, the Special Olympics has been one of those things, and I never want to underscore the efforts of all of our fine folks here at the Sheriff's Office who, you know, give of their time in various and different capacities. But the one thing I can say is, you know, having been here, you know, a little over 21 years now, is that the Special Olympics has been something that I've seen, that we've had involvement in since almost the first day I, I can remember walking in. And uh, the people who are invested in it, who are involved in it, truly show a level of dedication uh, that, that you just don't see each and every day. And their, their commitment level stays the same, if not increases, each and every year. You got to look at these special kids that they're out there looking out for and they're, that are putting together uh, these various fundraising efforts to help support. You know, the Special Olympics does amazing, amazing work uh, for these kids that have all of the challenges in life uh, in order to be able to get out and, and demonstrate truly what they're capable of doing. And again, you know, to watch whether we're out seeing these guys in a tip of cop in a restaurant serving drinks and food and everything else, uh, to the bowling alleys, to serving up some of the best Cajun food uh, it's, that, that, uh, that you're going to find. Uh, but most importantly, when they come up to the, to the big annual torch run, which is where we really see, particularly our area law enforcement, not just the men and women of the Sheriff's Office, but Lubbock Police Department and the Department of Public Safety and other entities that all come out uh, to make that long run in support of these kids so that they can have a great annual Special Olympics event. So I want to encourage everybody to, to look hard and, and take note of the efforts these folks are doing because they truly care about the individuals that they're out there trying to support. And, and I would certainly encourage everyone, uh, if possible, to, uh, to toss some support into that. Because again, I think, you know, looking at things from my perspective, uh, you know, coming back to our communities, looking at what we're doing in our communities and staying focused on the truly important things uh, is, is what really matters and what's, what makes our communities truly a better place to live in. So thank you. 
Thank you, Sheriff Rowe, for your time and commitment to the law enforcement torch run and passion for our athletes. We get to personally experience these amazing first responders serving our communities through law enforcement across the state, whether that is by carrying the flame of hope at a competition, visiting our athletes' birthday parties, or hosting and supporting fundraising events just like this. We are grateful for the remarkable work that law enforcement does for our athletes and organization. Each year, law enforcement across the state combines to raise over $1.5 million. So we hope you will join in those efforts today by making your own donation by using the link provided to support athletes right here in the South Plains. Now it is my pleasure to introduce a few people who are literally changing the game for our athletes. As we work to bring Special Olympic athletes opportunities on the Texas Tech campus, we knocked on many doors. But the TTU Rec Center not only answered, they broke down barriers for us. Here to talk to you about the impact of unified sports, our very own ESPN Top 30 SO College campus are Brett, James, and Hannah with Texas Tech Intramural Sports. Hi, my name is Brett Jackson. I'm with Jamie Kemp and Hannah Tomic, and we are with Texas Tech University Recreational Sports. We work with our intramural sports program and we are happy to partner with the Unified Sports Program with Special Olympics. So Unified Sports started with Texas Tech in the spring of 2018. Uh, the Special Olympics South Plains area approached us about a partnership in, in having a unified program with our intramural sports program at Texas Tech. Um, we initially started that spring of 2018 with intramural basketball and ever since then the program has exceeded all of our expectations. Um, everyone from the partners to the athletes to our staff, uh, everybody's all in on Unified Sports at Texas Tech. Since then, we have had the opportunity to offer, like I said, basketball, flag football, soccer, archery, table tennis, uh, disc golf, to name some sports. Uh, we also hosted in the fall of 2019 a Unified Rivalry game with TCU, with Texas Tech coming on out on top, guns up. Um, but yeah, we are absolutely happy with our program. Um, we are looking to the future and how we can expand and grow the program um, with our partners again, with the athletes, and as well as with our staff and with Recreational Sports at Texas Tech. So Tuesday nights at 6.30 has been the most popular time um, to play in the last couple of years since the spring of 2018. Not only for our staff, but the participants who play um, they really enjoy coming together and you know getting together as a community. Um, even if their their game time is until 7:30, they will still show up early and be excited for um, Texas Tech students and um, the athletes out there as well and cheering them them on. One of the uh, more exciting parts of my job is scheduling the officials along with our staff. Um, Tuesday nights have been the more popular times for our staff to come and work because they really do and truly um, enjoy um, working with unified sports and also working with um, those athletes and um, getting to share their uh, success and um, keep on providing a popular atmosphere for our uh, our staff. NURSA has also provided a really good opportunity for athletes to get to travel and, par and participate against other schools. In the spring of 2019, the Texas Tech Unified Sports Basketball Team did travel to Texas A&M. I was fortunate enough to be able to be on staff there and um, watch our team team play. It was a really satisfying experience um, for me to get to travel to a new city and watch our, our team play. Um, I can't tell you how, how many smiles that, that I saw on the, not only the athlete face, but then the uh, students who were involved too. So I began working this in spring 2019 and the, I worked the very first event which was the skills ass assessment for basketball and we had maybe 30 tech students come out and we were like wow this is awesome and then fast forward to spring 2020 whenever we started our basketball season we had over 56 tech students come out and they really have bought in that just goes to show how special this program is is because 
anytime someone sees it, they want to be a part of it. I've had officials come up to me after games and they say, how do I get involved? I want to be here every Tuesday. It's just something that's really special for us that we are so happy to be a part of. So the TCU Ravel game is one of my favorite uh, events we had. It was a flag football event where we had a lot of people out there and TCU came into town. It was something that was so special to me and those who participated. Uh, we had uh, Raider Red out there and he was cheering us on and we had posters and the, the, the atmosphere that night was so great and everyone was just so positive and I know for me as a staff member, Special Olympics has truly changed our Tuesday nights, but not even just our Tuesday nights, but the way we go about our work. We know that our work means something, and that is thanks to Special Olympics because we have made a difference, and they have made a difference in us. As you can see, we really do value our partnership with Special Olympics and being able to offer unified sports at Texas Tech. This program has touched all of our lives, personally, uh, as a small group, as our community. We challenge each of you, if you're not part of the Unified Sports Program, to join the Inclusion Revolution. Thank you, Brett, James, and Hannah, for sharing your unified experience with all of us. You all are a true testament to how Special Olympics programs impact and inspire all of us to be advocates for our society, promoting respect, encouraging others, and creating communities focused on abilities rather than disabilities. Unified, pairing individuals with and without intellectual disabilities together to grow in life together is the movement of Special Olympics. It is unifying communities around the world and it has an enormous presence here in Texas from elementary schools through universities, large and small. I would like to now welcome to the stage an incredible family who has been involved with our organization for over 20 years. They are leaders in our organization, advocates for every athlete, and the true embodiment of the Special Olympics mission. No matter where in Texas life calls them, they have found a home within our organization and are working together to bring opportunities to all athletes. Please join me in welcoming the Dayton family. Hi, my name is Farhan Dayton. I have been with Special Olympics for 20 years. I am an athlete, volunteer, global messenger, and a member of ALPS, Athlete Leadership Program Committee. Let me introduce you to my mom and daddy, dad, Patty, and Troy Deaton. Hello. I would like to tell you a little bit about how we were introduced and got involved with Special Olympics. When Ryan was seven years old, her teacher asked us if we were going to Ryan's competition. Hmm. Huh. We weren't aware of any competition, and I asked what kind. Ryan had many limitations. She said Special Olympics. We associated Special Olympics with older individuals. Ryan was to compete in softball throw, okay, long jump, well, and 25 meter dash, no way. You see, Ryan's limitations were verbal and physical. She was born with a club foot and after two surgeries and a walking brace, she struggled with walking. So running, no. We had so many concerns and worried about her safety like many parents. But when the whistle blew, she was off, giving all her might, but stopped to make sure we were watching her and she completed her goal. Well, needless to say, that changed her and us. We just witnessed a new spark in our girl, Ryan. Her limitations just got smaller. Special Olympics became a way of life for our family. During school years, physical education was a requirement, but with Ryan and her medical history, doctors waived that requirement, but the school said she had to have it anyway. Unfortunately, she just sat at the side. Thankfully, her elementary school and Special Olympic activities and teachers were willing to coach, so they recognized this as her PE requirement. When transitioning to high school, they didn't have a program set up there. Bummer. But that did not stop us. We found an independent team to join. We were not going to let anything stop us from the progress Ryan had gained. You see, by the time she started high school, Ryan competed in many sports to which it helped her develop her muscles, verbal communication, self-esteem, sportsmanship, and discipline. 
Special Olympic pulls individuals from watching from the sidelines to get active and involved. We as parents need to allow our kids to live, try, and accomplish their own goals just as everyone else. That's what Special Olympics did for our girl. Ryan has gained confidence, strength, friendships, and a relationship. Our family has moved quite a bit in Texas due to job transfers, but the one main thing that's consistent was Special Olympics. All this is possible because of all of you. There are so many ways that you can help. Volunteering. This can be done by assisting at local competitions one or two days a year, or becoming a coach of a sport that you like to play. Donating with water, food, equipment, and facilities to practice and hold events. Financially, your dollars go towards medals and ribbons, equipment for competitions, sometimes for venues such as golf courses, basketball courts, and bowling alleys. It will also help purchase uniforms and assist with transportation costs for those teams that live in rural towns. We understand COVID has affected our event recently. When it opens back up, we will be prepared. You can still donate financially by going to the website, SOTX.org, SOTOX.org. We are invested in Special Olympics as volunteers, chaperone, and coach. When you attend an event, you will see people just like us who are parents of athletes. I am proud of the goals I set for myself. Most of the time, I succeed and sometimes I don't, but at least I try. That goes with our athlete's oath. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Special Olympics will be with me for the rest of my life. Won't you come and enjoy the journey with us? Thank you for your time and listening and for your help. Please stay safe and healthy. Deaton family, your love for Special Olympics is a true testament to what our organization is about and the impact it not only makes on the life of an athlete, but the lives of an entire family. We thank you for your continued passion and dedication to continue to make this organization and our communities even better. Please consider making a contribution today to help support the families like the Deatons and all 58,000 plus individuals and their families across the state of Texas who participate in Special Olympics. It is now my pleasure to welcome our final speaker, Friendship Tiger athlete, Aiden Noyola. Aiden has worked with one of our biggest supporters and longtime coaches, Sherry Earhart, to grow as an athlete teammate and student throughout his years at Friendship ISD. We are so happy to have him here this morning to share his story with you. Welcome to the virtual breakfast of champions. My name is Aiden Noyola. I am excited to tell you a little about myself. I am 12 years old and my go to friendship middle school. I live with my mom and dad and my two sisters, Adriana and Elena. I was born blind. I don't see anything. So sometimes I have to learn to do things in different ways than others do. I read braille. I use 
and Abacus to help me with my math and I never travel anywhere without my cane. Here are some jokes I made up about my cane and abacus. What kind of cane does Aiden use when he has to get somewhere fast? A hurricane. What did the ones column say to the tens column? Give me an abacus. Four years ago, I started participating in Special Olympics. Before that, I had never been a part of a team. It has given me a chance to be involved in sports. I like bowling a lot. When I bowl, I use a ramp that helps me know where to place the ball and aim at the pins. I like running fast in track. I run by using a long rope that I hold to guide me to the finish line. I also like that I get the chance to meet new kids that I don't go to school with and my family loves for me to participate because they enjoy watching me and cheering me on. One of my favorite things is when I get my medal for doing good. I can't wait until I get to start playing again soon. Thank you for your time and pretty please support Special Olympics. Aiden, thank you for being an inspiration to all of our athletes and pushing this movement forward. We look forward to cheering you on and seeing how you continue to impact and lead our organization. It is so difficult to listen to these volunteers, athletes, and their families without being moved. All of these stories you heard today demonstrate the importance of the Special Olympics movement. We are all more alike than different. We are all one of those people. This movement is truly about creating a fully unified future for everyone. We hope that you can reflect on the words you heard today and continue to share our mission. Every donation today goes right back to helping us bring game-changing opportunities to athletes in your own community. That's right, the money raised today stays 
right here in the South Plains area to support, grow, and strengthen the opportunities we provide. On behalf of Special Olympics Texas, thank you all for joining the South Plains area virtual breakfast with champions. Today, you all have made a significant impact on the lives of over 58,000 Special Olympic Texas athletes. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. We are. We are. Ryan Revis. Jim Wilson in Dickinson Middle School. We would like to thank you for watching our Breakfast with Champions. Thank you for your support.